This program contains views and opinions that may not be suitable for all audiences. Audience discretion is advised. Welcome to Thespian Talk, everybody. I am your host, Gomer the Ranting Thespian, and my co-host this week is Holly Christine. The bunny is here. Hello. 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 <laughs> yes. Oh, so... This coming week, I am not looking forward to it because the children around here are going to be out for spring break. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh no. I just, can I kind of come stay with somebody for a week, please? <laughs> oh, uh, hopefully it won't be as bad as I fear it will be. Um, I have what... my own children's story this week, actually. Oh, really? I must hear this. Yeah. So I get a tweet yesterday from somebody um, asking if I'll play Animal Crossing New Leaf with them, and then they sent me a phone number. <laughs> Duh! Uh... And I was like, that's weird, because it was only seven digits of the phone number. <laughs> Oops. I don't know who this person is, so I don't even know what area code they live in. And I was like, <laughs> that's weird. And then I get a tweet from somebody else saying, um, uh, like apologizing and says sorry about that a little kid about nine decided to try finding you he assumed that you knew me because we exchanged fruit in animal crossing new leaf <laughs> <laughs> and, and i've gotten like no less than you know 15 messages from this kid <laughs> oh no <laughs> it's so bizarre <laughs> well, that just that just, okay I, you I, know, like it's, it's super cute but i'm yeah. like you know the first thing i was like uh, I don't get my phone number out over the internet, and neither should you. Oh, <laughs> I mean, we did exchange friend codes, so now I can play Animal Crossing with this kid, but... <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah, I will say this, guys. If you make a Twitter for your kid, also supervise the Twitter. <laughs> yes, please. That That is what parenting is all about. You yeah. Yeah. Supervise your little your little kids and your big kids too, even because yep. once they get to a certain age, you don't need to supervise them. But until then, yeah. But even then, you should supervise them to a little bit, I suppose. I mean, you don't want them to go out and like shoot up stores or whatever just because they can. Hopefully, by right. the time they get to that age, they know better. At least that that would that would be my assumption. Oh, and another way I should probably know better, though I don't know how much of the blame I can really take on this, but I, I feel I should take some at least. There's been uh, there's been this uh, uh, screen cap going around of a news article, and, and and yes, third third current events show in a row I've brought these guys up. The Westboro Baptist Church. There was a news article, uh, not a news article, but a, a screen cap of a news article running around. Uh, f saw it on Tumblr, on Facebook, where the the Westboro Baptist Church is like, please don't protest uh, Fred Phelps' funeral. Please don't. If you have any decency, please don't do this. And, yeah. and a lot of people were like, oh, motherfuckers, really? I mean, the the decent ones of us, like I, like I was saying on Constructive Deconstruction, you know, I, 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 wouldn't, I do not encourage it. In fact, I would say don't do it because we can be better people. But um, even with all of that said, for them to – for them, according to this, for them to have come out and said after doing all of this to not have it done to them, that just seems really hypocritical. Yeah. However, after a little digging, and I don't remember if it was me – I don't remember if it was me who found it or somebody else who found it, but that news story was on the Daily Courant. Yeah. <laughs> So it's like, yeah, trolled again. <laughs> yes, we were all trolled, and and I should have known better, because I remember hearing at one point they didn't want to hold a funeral for Fred Phelps. It's like, wait a minute. <laughs> so so that's where that's definitely where I could take my responsibility. It's like I should have looked it up and known better. But you know, hey, live and learn, and at least we know now. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, it, it, yeah, wow, just. Holy wow. <laughs> oh, I actually it, – it's not public on YouTube yet, but you can find it on – I think it's just on my uh, main Tumblr. But I started a Majora's Mask run just this past week, and let me tell you. 
I, I I need work with my voices. I am not Spaz Fox. <laughs> <laughs> uh, although although because I did get lazy with one of the voices, I now have a very interesting alternate interpretation of the exposition fairy in the game, Toddle. Uh, but uh, I'm not going to give that away. You you guys have to go and and watch it because I, I I have fun with it. Uh, voices aside, it's quite fun, and I look forward to doing more with that one. Uh, that is my official palate cleanser from Pokemon Quartz. Oh my god, Quartz. Oh, if you've not been watching it, go watch it. Experience the same kind of pain that I do. I will give I will give that uh, particular uh, Pokemon Ruby ha- hack some credit. That he does have some legitimately challenging moments. And he's tweaked, he's tweaked a few things in the battle system and all of that. And it's really... Dialogue aside, it's not so bad. Mm-hmm. Okay, dialogue and really horrific uh, Pokemon uh, rearranging because these are all totally new, quote unquote, new Pokemon. And uh, yeah, some of them just they just make they make me want to cry. Yeah, so <laughs> yeah, so so uh, let's see. I do I do have a shout out this week that I'm probably going to be pulling out of my ass right about now. Um. <laughs> Which means I wasn't paying too close attention, but I will say this, and I'll count her as my shout out. Uh, Mars Girl, she and Josh Knight the first have just, you know, within the past couple of weeks, have started a new season of Beyond the Black Rims, which you can find over on Mars Girl's YouTube account. So go check it out. They they do them live every, I think it's every Thursday. They do the live show, and then they put that recording up a couple of days later. So if you want to go see the live show, go to Mars Girl's uh, Twitch page, which I think it's twitch.com slash Mars Girl. Look at the live show, watch the live show, and hang out with all of us. I'm usually going to be in there because I like listening to the two of them go on about all this geeky, nerdy stuff. And and even if you don't make it, go check it out on YouTube. Go subscribe to her. It's, it's really good stuff. Uh, do you have any shout-outs on that particular note? <laughs> Um, I do. Uh, my shout out is actually the reason why I'm late today, which is because I was playing a game um, called Smash Hit. It's basically uh, um, it's a mobile game, and uh, you're sort of flying through this area where you have to break through crystallized stuff, um, and the goal is just to make it all the way through till the end. It looks like there's ten levels. I've gotten to the end of level nine. I haven't gotten into the tenth level yet, but it's pretty addicting, <laughs> and it's funny because it it, it turns like you get kind of sucked into it, and so despite knowing that you're not flying through this area and you're not about to run into things, you still find yourself dodging them anyway. <laughs> and I'll notice myself do it, and then I'll laugh because I'm like, "Oh, I'm such an idiot." <laughs> yeah, it, it's it's like the fishing game in uh, Ocarina of Time. More so on the 3DS because I was sitting, I was sitting playing last night, and I was like, okay, you know what, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna go do the fishing game. I throw the line, I get, I get what looks like one of the biggest fish on the hook, and I'm sitting there holding back like you're supposed to, and at the same time I'm also moving the 3DS with me, and it's like the gyro controls don't work that way. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think I was that bad on the N64 controller when I was younger, and I played it on that. But, but give me the 3DS. <laughs> oh, yeah. And and unfortunately, I, I lost the fish. And as I've noted on Tumblr, if you've not done this, you, you will do this. And when you lose the fish, because you will undoubtedly lose the fish every now and then, the the words I use to describe what I would do to the fishing. The fishing pole to the fisherman that lets you rent the pole to Link and inexplicably their mother all come into play. Single player <laughs> game, by the way. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, so with all of that, uh, I've tried to arrange this week's news stories from, you know, worst to arguably best in terms of in terms of seriousness. Last one is, is, is still Last one we have today is still kind of face palming, face palm worthy, but it's not as serious. It's just a bunch of silly people. But we're gonna start on the more serious note here, and in piss off note, and this one's out of Virginia Beach, Virginia, 
We teach kids that honesty is the best policy. But at one Virginia Beach middle school, it might be better to keep the truth to yourself. Last Thursday at Bayside Middle School, 6th grader and Andriana Harris came to the aid of a classmate who was cutting his arm. She faces expulsion for taking a razor from the student, throwing it away, and convincing him that what he wasn't doing that what he was doing wasn't right. She thought she was doing the right thing, so on Friday she told the school administration what had happened. The way the school officials responded led to this question. Was the school's zero tolerance policy taken too far? Uh yes. Uh, just just slightly. Just just the, a the little The fact bit. that she touched something that was contraband does not make her guilty of owning it, having it, possessing it. Like she threw it away. Yeah. Oh my god, people. It's it's like Dude's cutting himself. I stopped him. I threw the blade away. I said, you know what? No, no. Boom. In the trash can you go. Or even down the toilet. We'd... Right. She doesn't say. But... Do I take it away from him or do I walk away and let him continue to cut himself and hurt himself? Yeah. Like, the... seriously. Yeah. To this sixth grader, th- this Adriana Harris girl, you you are awesome because you were, you were helpful. You, you, you stopped somebody from harming themselves when they really don't need to be. Good on you. I, 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 I actually applaud this girl. Cause, I do too. So, because, yeah. I mean, I've, I've known plenty of cutters in my time. I know, I know a little bit about the mindset behind them and, 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 and all of that. And you know what? That's, that's a help thing. That, that's helpful. Uh, just, it's, wow. And, and, and I do like her. I do like her attitude after this whole thing. Even if I got in trouble, it didn't matter because I was helping him. I would do it again even if I got suspended. Yes. So she she would do it again if if the results would have been the same. So so who you know But zero tolerance. Okay, I can understand, you know, not having the dangerous weapons on the campus. That's fine. You know, you want you want a safe place. Sure. But zero tolerance period uh, that that still depend it it it's a lot having to do with with the uh, situational stuff basically. Like, yeah, she didn't own this. She didn't bring it. She didn't keep it. Right. So, it, it, like, in what way? Like, just because she held it in her hand, like that breaks the zero tolerance tolerance policy. Yeah, and keep in mind, I at least didn't see any anything about the kid who was doing who was cutting himself i haven't seen anything either so it's like did this kid get in trouble because he was the one with the razor blade and inflicting harm upon himself granted but he was still inflicting harm upon himself and i'm assuming wait did i did i say it was yeah okay yeah the article did say it was it was a male so 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 it's like does he get into any trouble for this for having the razor blade do they does the axe fall on him just as much as it falls on her I, I mean, I don't know the deal there. I mean, if it doesn't, then that's, you know, you're you're kind of uh, picking and choosing who gets punished for having what could be a weapon. Granted, a razor could be a weapon, but in the circumstances, like, nobody's getting harmed. He's using it to harm himself. Yeah, get it away from him, sure. Stop him from doing it. But if it's another student doing it, you don't you don't smack the student down for it. That's basically, you're telling the student, no, you should not be doing this. Let somebody else handle it or walk away. It's not your problem, whichever yeah. the case may be. And that's not the right way to go. I mean, you see somebody doing something like that. Sure. I mean, if you feel you can't do anything, alert an authority, an authority figure, hopefully should be able to take care of it. But if, right. If can't... you're afraid that you're going to make the situation worse, that's understandable. Yeah. But this girl thought she could help and she did the right thing and she's getting punished for it. And I think that's awful. It is. It's, it's just, uh, fucking people. Oh, and sorry. I think that's probably why we've only heard about her and not the boy, because, you know, here she is trying to do this good thing and is being told you broke the rules and now you're suspended. Yeah. That's one of those cases where you have to say, fuck the rules. I'm doing what's right. I think that's a TV trope. <laughs> oh, screw the rules. I'm doing what's right. And I encourage this. If if breaking the rules 
means doing the right thing, or if doing the right thing means breaking the rules, then break them. You know? Yeah. You know, which which which, which would cause more harm? You got to take that into account and go for the one that causes less harm. If if less harm is what you're going for. Oh, so uh, this next one. <laughs> This next one is kind of silly. Uh, and this one is Van Buren. I want to say it's Arkansas, I think it is. Uh, the Van Buren Police Department arrested Drake Parks, 50 of Van Buren, Thursday for harassing communications, according to a news release from Detective Jonathan Ware, public information officer for the Van Buren Police Department. Parks was arrested due to complaints filed against him for inappropriate comments to a local bank teller, according to the news release. Authorities receive a, received a report on February 28th from the teller reporting the inappropriate comments. The victim, a young woman, stated that Parks had come into the bank on that day and made a transaction. She then received a call at approximately 3.30 p.m. The caller stated that he was Drake Parks' father, quote-unquote, and that Drake had said the teller was being a, I'm going to say bitch. Cause, bitch, yeah. yeah. That would be my guess. That would be mine, too, that day. The teller then stated that Drake got on the phone and said that he wanted her to do what his father told her to do. He started to give her an address when she hung up and contacted the police. <laughs> uh, oh, and the I, I skipped a line there. The caller went on to say Drake should be punished for saying that, and there would be $50 in her pocket if she would punish Drake. <laughs> <laughs> what? What? Okay. <laughs> What? <laughs> that is bizarre. It is even for even for Arkansas standards. That is bizarre. I don't even think that happens in Florida. Wow. That is... <laughs> what is he? What did he I'm expect? Straight in my head, like he, he's he's getting his dad to help him hook up with the bank teller to punish him, like. Because that's, like, is that how it sounds to you? Because that's how it sounds to me. That's how it sounds, but keep in mind there's the quote-unquote Drake Park's father, which tells me right. he was trying to masquerade as his own father to get her to do this. That's that's true, because Drake Park's, as, as we mentioned previously, was 50. Yeah, that does say he was 50, and his father would be, what, maybe at, at, at the earliest, In maybe 60s. Yeah, got to be in his 70s at least. Um, if you want to push it, 66 at, at the earliest, I would assume. Yeah. You know? But yeah, <laughs> just <laughs> I wish I wish I could like hear the call on this one because because it'd be like it'd be like, like really genuinely as we read this story, I'm I'm thinking like it, my brain just skipped over the 50 and was thinking that you know that was the dad and that the the kid was like you know, 25 or something. And no, no, <laughs> no he was 50 and his dad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> called to get the girl to punish him. He caught you a bitch. I'll give you $50. If you spank him one whack for every year and $1 for every whack. There mm. you go. <laughs> uh, speaking of, Speaking of insanity, all of the Republican incumbents of Illinois who supported marriage equality won their primaries Tuesday, but one particularly anti-LGBT candidate for Congress did beat more did beat her more liberal challenger, Suzanne At Atanas, who is challenging Representative Jan Schakowsky. Is that how, I think that's right? Chicago's yeah. seat in Illinois' 9th district, which includes much of Chicago, won her Republican primary against former Obama supporter and Navy veteran David Earl Williams III. Atnes received national attention in January when she told the Daily Herald that God sends devastating weather like tornadoes and diseases like autism as punishment for LGBT equality and abortion rights. Another one of you fuckos, huh? Oh, uh, and we have quotes. We have quotes. <clears throat> I am a conservative Republican, and I believe in God first, she said. She said she believes God controls the weather and has put tornadoes and diseases such as auti autism and dementia on Earth as in response to gay rights and legalized abortions. 
that's right. Your granny is is delusional, of, and 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 going out of her mind with dementia. And that's because gay people are getting married and women are are, are you know having abortions. Right, because autism and dementia are two new things to to yeah. the world. Uh, dementia's Just been like around for right. a long time. <laughs> Dementia's been around for a long time. Oh, man. Maybe not by name, but it's been around for a long time. God is angry. We are provoking him with abortions and same-sex marriage and civil unions. I don't know why I went with that voice, but I'm going to run with it. Same-sex activity is going to increase AIDS. If it's in our military, it will weaken our military. We need to respect God. Increase AIDS? What is this, the 80s? I guess. <laughs> what the hell? No, it is not going to If it's to in our military, it. it will weaken our military. Really? Because I don't remember our military getting weaker. No. Um, and, and we do let, you know, gay people in the military. So, yeah. Uh, and, and the last time I checked, Don't Ask, Don't Tell, wasn't that repealed? Uh, yeah, I think so. Yeah. So, yeah, our military is just the same as ever, really. No, I've not seen any significant change in strength, be it pro or con, so... No, I, I I think that that you know, gays in the military not really affecting much in that department. Oh, uh, in response to those comments, the state Republican Party did its best to distance itself from her. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Because she's crazy. Yes, her <laughs> candidacy is neither supported nor endorsed by the leaders of our party, and she should withdraw from the race immediately. Her state party, state party chair uh, Jack Dorgan said in the statement, "With Chicago care." Chicago chair, rather, Adam Robinson, adding, Antonis is not in any way affiliated with any of our efforts in the Chicago GOP, nor have we ever supported, endorsed, or assisted her in any way at any time. Wow. How big is that bus they're throwing her under? I wonder. Just, just fuck you. You know, I, yeah, I, I can't feel bad for her about it, because she's the one that threw herself under the bus, so. Yeah, th this is, you know, and, and that bus is a double-decker megabus, so, you know. Yeah, <laughs> this is this is the people that that people are voting for. She won her primary. This is the this is the scary thing. She she people voted for her. Yeah, well, I don't see her winning the the coming race. So <laughs> oh, no, she's just she's just gonna fall flat on her ass. Not even her ass. She's gonna fall on her face. Yep. Because at least if you fall on your ass, you have some padding. I don't think she has that. Ah, uh, but here is a feel-good story. I love this story. <clears throat> a trio of California high school students scored big points for the off-maligned teens for off-maligned teens everywhere on Monday when they rushed into a burning house to rescue a 94-year-old woman and her elderly dog, heroically saving their lives. Fuck yes. Basically, they just reacted, says Mark Cordy, principal of California High School in San Ramon, San Ramon, California, where the three boys are seniors in the sports medicine program. He tells Yahoo Shine that when he initially spoke with them about the dramatic incident, the friends, still smelling of smoke, shrugged it off as no big deal. But as we continued to talk about the details, Cordy adds, I think they were able to understand a little bit better that they had risked their own lives. <laughs> it's like... And it, 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 it's very heroic. It's heroic achievements in partial ignorance or just don't give a shit. It's like, shit, people in danger. Let's go in there. And after you realize you risked your own lives, oh, shit, we did? Okay. Um, yeah, I think we'll that's just one of those instances where they did it and they didn't think about the fact that they were risking their lives. Yeah. Which makes it, to me, makes it all the more badass. <laughs> it's like, hey. You know, you know, rescuing somebody being badass and just doing it is awesome all the same for me. Uh, it all began late morning on Monday when Kirill Yentikov, Karen Kisoyan, and Peter Kravari – blah! I, what the hell is up with these names? Anyway, all 17 were driving through a residential neighborhood near their school, reportedly skipping class to go to McDonald's. That's when they noticed thick smoke pouring out of a house, stopped to see what was happening, and found resident Diana Davis, 71, calling 911 while struggling to douse flames with a garden hose. She told them her 94-year-old mother was still inside. Meanwhile, neighbor Bob Smith, 73, came out of the smoke-filled house, saying he needed help with a rescue. 
And long story short, as as mentioned, the kids went in there. They they helped them out. They got the got the mother in the chair, clutching the leash of her dog, an 18 year old Jack Terrier Russell, Jack Russell Terrier rather, who was deaf and partially blind. And they got them outside. We picked up the chair and grabbed the dog. The only thing she said to us was, "I'm on fire." <laughs> and obviously they put her out. The lady and the dog are fine. The kids, um, I think for skipping class, I want to say that they may have got something for skipping class. But it, from what I'm gathering, uh, I, I think uh, I think it's minimal considering, you know, yeah, you skipped class, but you saved a life, dude. You saved two lives. Yeah, I – yeah, and it's just... Uh, I can't... It's just... Seriously. Wow. Yeah. And the punishment is only four volunteers out, volunteer hours each. And that that's it. That's like, you know, I, I think that's fair. You know, you saved a life, but you still skipped class. So, you know, you, yeah, you know, you, that that's one of those things. Oh. Oh, wow. But... Yeah, I, I want to see more stories like that. That is just pure awesome. And Becky, if you're listening, I hope that restores your faith in humanity a little bit. Because <laughs> a lot of the stories I actually you know, go through for the show, I, I do run by her a little bit because we're usually on the on the Skype calls and everything. And so she gets she gets a little preview of what goes on the show. There was a couple of them. I was going to put them in here, but then it's like, no, 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 no. They would have been way too disturbing. Um even though I had things to say about them, it's like, no, I'm going to save them for somewhere else, probably on my Tumblr or whatever. But um, but Becky knows what they are, and and she knows most of the stories I put in here because, well, I, she's also great for uh, bouncing ideas off of what I want to say. Uh, so, uh, But this one I don't think I ran by her, or I might have. I think I might have. Uh, this next one. Uh, Ed Hoban isn't your typical father. He's anything but. In fact, the Dutchman, 44, is known for being the most fertile man in Europe and quite possibly the world. Well, I don't know. We, we haven't tried me out yet. <clears throat> Why? Hoban has fathered a whopping 98 children in the space of 12 years. That's a lot of sexercise. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It all started in 2002 when he donated his sperm through a local fertil fertility clinic in the Netherlands. Fast forward 12 years where he now spreads his seed in a more traditional sense, or the natural way, by offering a free service to have sex with women and couples who want, excuse me, who want to have a baby. What motivates me is meeting new people who turn out to be great normal people, and there's some beautiful hope of creating new a new life which, can, which will be looked, loved and looked after. Oh. Through his website, Hobden connects with couples, lesbians and heterosexuals, who have problems with fertility or who lack the necessary organs needed to make a baby. I'm not saying the traditional family is a bad form. Absolutely not. I'm just saying if they want to keep existing, we might have to reconsider what a qualified family is. But unlike other donors, he prefers to be a part of the process, in more ways than one. Weird. I've... Yeah. <laughs> I... <laughs> not gonna lie. Yeah. That's, that's I... weird. It is. I've met many children from right after birth, and I've been present at two births. It was fantastic, he said. As the children grow up, they'll develop their own relationship with me, or not, but they'll know where they came from. For now, it's mostly the initiative of the parents to visit me twice a year, for example. And with a strike rate of 80%, his little swimmers are hot property. A semen analysis, otherwise known as a spermiogram, reveals he's sitting comfortably with 100 million per count. Anything under 20 million means the carrier is not a good prospect. I don't fire blanks, he joked. <laughs> so it's basically this guy. He's fertile and, and he wants to help, you know, couples, lesbians, wants to help people just have kids that want to have kids. It's, he's, it's not like he's going around the European countryside and just inseminating every woman he sees. You know, they, they come to him for the help. They're like, look, you know, we need this help. Can you help us? That sort of thing. And he's like, sure, just let let me fuck you. <laughs> Which is an interesting way to go about it. Uh, yeah, <laughs> like I'm sort of speechless on yeah. this one. It's it's weird. Yeah, that actually has been offered to me at one point a few years ago. Uh, a friend of mine was 
you know, she was considering having a kid with her girlfriend or I think it was her girlfriend at the time. But, you know, you know, obviously they don't have the equipment to do that. And so she asked me, she's like, well, when the time comes, would you be willing to do, do the natural way? I was like, OK, sure, I guess, you know, if that's what you want, because I'm, I'm obviously a little more open about that and and all that. So uh, although doing that in this country, uh, considering what we've, what I've heard about, what was it? I think it was Kansas or whatever. Where they were going after a sperm donor for child support because it was done outside this after it was done outside the sperm donation yeah. system or whatever. So it's like, yeah. And if I'd known that, <laughs> if I'd known about that back then, or if it had happened back then, I may not have been so quick to say, yeah. Ah. Uh, but anyway, uh, it, it, do you think do you think anybody we know would partake in this? Um, probably. <laughs> I can't say that I would personally do it because if, uh, for some reason I couldn't have a baby the natural way with my partner, um, I wouldn't necessarily want to specifically do it that way <laughs> with yeah. somebody else. Right. So you know, so so if you can't, so if you have a partner and, and and they can't produce a kid, help you produce a kid, sperm bank, <laughs> basically, right? Yeah, uh, my assumption. It, it's just not an experience that I'd want to share with anyone. Yeah, and so, that's perfectly fine and valid. Yeah, and but I'm certain that there are people that we know who would be fine with it. So. Yeah, yeah. If you're one of those, writing the show. <laughs> no, no, don't. You don't have to. Uh, last one we have for today. This one is just silly. <laughs> Creationists held a pity party for themselves Thursday because Cosmos isn't being fair and balanced to their beliefs. Really? Yeah. Uh, creationists aren't even on the radar screen for them. They wouldn't even consider us plausible at all, said Danny Faulkner of Answers in Genesis, which has previously complained about the show. Faulkner appeared Thursday on the Janet Medford show to complain to complain the Fox television series and its host, Neil deGrasse Tyson, had marginalized those with dissenting views on accepted scientific truths, reported right wing right wing watch. Blah, 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 blah. Ah. I don't recall seeing any interviews with people that yet that may yet come, but it's based upon the narration from the host and then various types of little video clips of various things, cartoons and things like that, Faulkner said. Mefford said the show should at least offer view, offer viewers a false compromise. That's that's right, people. This this guy is saying you don't have to compromise with us, but you should at least pretend like you're compromising with us. Uh huh. What the hell? It's like really? Oh. It it it's it's the same kind of argument when creationists tried to push their stuff into science classes. This is not science. Creationism is not science. Intelligent design is not science. Not not the science that we're talking about. You know, Becky and I actually talked about this uh, recently this week because again, this is one of the stories that I ended up running by her, and we both agree. You know, if you're going to have some kind of creationist theory in school or whatever, put it in its own class. Put it in a religious studies class or a social sciences class. Or, or somewhere that it would fit better than an actual science class. Yeah. It's just you don't you don't put it there. Boy when you boy, but when you have so many scientists who simply do not accept Darwinian evolution, it seems to me that that might be something to throw in there. You know, the old some scientists say this, other disagree and say, think this, but that's not even allowed, she said, uh, she being uh, Mefford, the I guess the host of the show. Um Tyson recently said science reporting should not be balanced with non-scientific claims, so that seems unlikely he would offer that sort of fallacious argument on his own show. You don't talk about the spherical Earth with NASA and then say let's give equal time to the flat Earthers, Tyson told TNN. Plus, science is not there for you to cherry pick. Damn straight. Because yeah. that's the – that is I, – I think it was Tyson who said it himself. You know, it was either him or Bill Nye, one of those guys. That said, uh, science is fact whether you agree with it or believe in it or not. It it's just is, you know. Oh, I don't believe in the. I don't believe in gravity. Well, then how's your ass being held down on the earth? 
Well, to be fair, gravity is a theory. <laughs> we can't necessarily prove it, but we can't disprove it either. Right. Oh, uh, and and of course, wording like that, you know, people were like, "Well, wait, 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 wait what about God? Isn't God a theory?" No, God is a deity that is, that was most likely made up by a bunch of people who wanted to write a religious book in order to control the population. That's my guess, but you know. Well, <laughs> Even go with God is a theory. Um, it, the problem with that is it still has to be scientifically provable that it's a possibility. And I'm, I don't know of any science that can do that right now. Yeah. So. Meanwhile, we can still, you know, we can still prove gravity. You throw something in the air, it's going to come back down, most yeah. likely. And there are other elements that could keep it up there without coming back down. Like, you know, you throw a sticky ball and it sticks on the ceiling. That's not going to come back down. You toss a little bird and the bird flies away. You know, that, that's a couple of the different variables. But odds are you drop something, it will fall to the ground. So that, <sighs> unlike God, it's like, how can you, how, how, how do you, how can you tell God is there? Oh, we read the Bible. Okay, who wrote the Bible? Because I believe in him. Yeah, it's like <laughs> belief is not enough to prove something. Right, really. you can believe a lot of things that doesn't necessarily make them true. Yeah, you know, you know, I can sit here and believe that I think uh, that I believe Holly's hair is pink right now. Doesn't mean it is. In mm -hmm. fact, she's probably not pink-haired. Nope, I'm not. No, so yeah. And and keep in mind, all I have to base this on is her is her Skype user profile, which, which is how old is that? <laughs> so, so things could have changed between there and now. But I also take your word for it because you're not going to bullshit me. Yep. Oh, so with that, that is going to be the news for this week. We got about twenty minutes left. Holy shit, we actually have some extra time. <laughs> I know. Usually it's like. We're getting towards the end, and we're like, yeah, we're not going to cover all the news stories today, but... Yeah, so um, let's see. I am going to pull something out of the... Okay, really? You're not going to let me just... Okay. I'm actually going to pull something out of the files I have for backup. Yes, we have a BuzzFeed list on here this week. And this particular BuzzFeed list, if it will actually go for me, there you go. 50 books you'll never read the same way again. <laughs> uh, some of these I might have known beforehand. Some of them you might have known beforehand. But then some of them will make you just... I don't know. Uh, we'll, we'll, if, if your head explodes, take a shot. Uh, speaking of which, I don't think we had a Florida story this week. Holy shit. Yeah, we didn't. Oh my god. This Maybe most... it's because you were trying to censor them and not be too overly serious yeah because oh god florida <laughs> oh so um anyways as i was saying 50 books you'll never read the same way again on buzzfeed um number one vladimir vladimir uh, nabokov wrote lolita on note cards while traveling on butterfly collecting trips in the u.s and you know you gotta get it written somehow i suppose Number two, his wife Vera prevented him from burning the unfinished drafts of Lolita. So apparently he wrote it. He, he at one point was ashamed of it or just wanted to start over or whatever. And his wife's didn't like, didn't like it or something. Yeah, his wife's like, no, you go publish this because people will like it. Number three, and this one kind of worries me. Fifty it Shades of worries me too. <laughs> Fifty Shades of Grey is Britain's best-selling book of all time. Seriously, not even one of the Harry Potter books? Like Not even one not even the oh James God, Bond guys. books? This this makes me sad. It does. Or, or Sherlock Holmes, not even a Sherlock Holmes book? Yeah. Like, come on. I mean, the only way I can see it being justified is if people are buying it just to laugh at it. Not even Lord of the Rings. Like I just there's so many better books that I can think of. Yeah, and you would think oh. you would think I've, I've I've heard the claim that the Bible is one of the best-selling books in the world, or at least in the U.S. or whatever. Obviously mm. not in Britain, because it's outsold the fucking Bible. Uh, let's see, number four, 
Where's Waldo was originally banned in America for including an illustration of a topless woman. <sighs> meanwhile, meanwhile, in, in Penthouse Headquarters or Playboy Mansion or whatever, or whatever was going around at the time, <laughs> yeah. you could see real topless women. Uh, Dan Brown, number five, Dan Brown was a pop singer and songwriter before writing The Da Vinci Code. I have not heard any of his stuff as far as I know. Have you? I'm not that. I know of, but um, I suppose it's possible. Um, yeah. I followed the link, and it says that time Dan Brown recorded a song about phone sex. <laughs> <laughs> really? Wow. Yeah. <laughs> oh, phone sex is awkward. How do you make a? Well, I, I can see how you can make a song out of it. I guess. Talking it was about called Nine Seven Six Love. And a sample of the lyrics is, I take you to bed and push the phone to my head. You make me feel like a man. <laughs> wow. Okay. And, uh, so if you guys follow this link, um, this also links to BuzzFeed, and you can listen to the song <laughs> on there. Oh, God. Oh, there's there's actually a, a bunch of his songs linked here. So, yeah. Huh. So we'll have to check that out. Uh, number six. Margaret and H.A. Ray built bicycles from spare parts to escape from a Nazi invasion in Paris while carrying the manuscript for Curious George. Oh, wow. If they, had escape, cool. if they hadn't escaped, we would, may not have had Curious George. I love Curious George. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Number seven, Herman Melville's Moby Dick was originally published without the epilogue because of a printer failure. Oh, what printer failed a... Fuck it, we have a deadline. Let's get it out there. Yeah, having not actually read Moby Dick, I, I can't say that I, I know what kind of difference that that makes, but yeah, I, I do have to say, if there were ever a book that I wish could have been printed without the epilogue, Harry Potter 7, <laughs> Deathly Hallows. <laughs> oh, that dear. fucking ruined the whole thing for me. I was like, what? <laughs> Aww. <laughs> oh, number eight. Of Mice and Men was originally titled Something That Happened. Okay. Yeah, that's an awful title, so that's it's probably a good thing that it was changed. Yeah. And it may, may have been changed because Steinbeck's puppy also ate the original manuscript to this classic novel. Um, puppy ate my homework. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Damn, I don't even remember the title. Oh, I'll just call it Of Mice and Men and be done with it. Holy shit, it became a classic. Uh, uh, I don't know if it became a classic before or after he died. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, Alexandra Dumas hired a ghostwriter to help write The Three Musketeers. Hmm. Never would have known that. I didn't know that either. Uh. Franz Kafka asked his friend to burn all of his work. The Trial, The Castle, and America were published against Kafka's will. Wow. I have not read any of them, but I, I might check them out because this is – the thing is, apparently these guys these, – these books are obviously well-known enough to put make him more of a household name, and he was ashamed of them, I, I would assume, or, or otherwise dissatisfied with them. Yeah. And they turn that, – that is one of those things. Is like you think you're ashamed of something. You feel like you're ashamed of something, but you put it out there anyway, or somebody does it for you against your will, and it turns out that people will eat it the hell up. Uh, you guys just never really know. Uh, number 12, Peter Pan allegedly killed the Lost Boys when they got too old. I had never heard this before, so I was like, what? Me neither. It's like – Messed up. Yeah. No wonder they all stay young in Neverland. They're never allowed to grow up because he murders them. But wait, what if Peter Pan gets too old? I I, I don't know because I've, I've never actually read the book, so. Oh. Would he have to kill himself? Hmm. Uh, or maybe the boys kill him? I don't know. Maybe. Hmm. Number 13, royalties from Adolf Hitler's Mein Kampf go directly to the Bavarian government. I'm not sh Bavarian government. Uh, I'm not familiar with their government. Were they pro or anti-Nazi? Or were they even a thing when World War II was going down? That's so weird. 
Sorry. Um, yeah. Yeah, he was apparently one of the richest authors of all time. I followed the link to ah. see if I can find some more about it. Right. Um, and it's what he used to fund his lavish lifestyles, his lifestyle, including a fleet of Mercedes um, and several luxurious mansions. <laughs> wow. All, all from the book. Hmm. That, that's, you know, uh, that, that, you know, give the guy credit. You know, he 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 did the awesome thing there. Uh, if you can make if you can make a living off of your book, that's pretty sweet. Of course, I'm not too fond of how, what he did. You know, with with the whole Germany and everything and the Nazi, but eh, that that kind of takes all, all the awesome down back. You know, below in, that, but in his lifetime, he made um, 7.8 million Reichmark. Uh, on the book, which is a hundred and fifty-two million dollars adjusted for inflation. Holy shit! That's pretty damn good. That's insane. <laughs> yeah. Uh, speaking of insane, and this is insane, I, I probably would have figured. Number fourteen: the Harry Potter books are the most banned books in America. Helps that there are seven of them. Uh. Yeah, because magic, oh my god. And magic, yet, oh, witchcraft. And yet you still let the kids read Lord of the Rings. <laughs> mm -hmm. And The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. Yeah. Well, and then we go to the next one. Alice in Wonderland was originally banned in China for having talking animals. R really? Of all reasons to ban that book, talking animals is the reason? Not like caterpillar who does drugs <laughs> uh, yeah, um, yeah what more do you need to say caterpillar on drugs mm. speaking of china aladdin was originally chinese in the arabian nights huh well it's still asian you know it's an asian story so yeah all right so number 17 lisa from saved by the bell a lark vor voris yeah yeah wrote a book filled with grammatical errors. Wait, so she became Stephanie Meyer? <laughs> I don't know. You'd think an editor would, you know, have helped out with that, but whatever. Yeah. Teeny Ted from Turnip Town is the world's smallest book. Okay. I guess I've, that makes sense. I've never heard of it, but... Me neither. I, I gotta wonder, is it small in terms of pages, words... Or is it like it, literally it, the size of of? Okay, I I see the picture here. Yeah, it's yeah. it's literally teeny tiny. Yeah, li yeah. Wow, that's that's some Dune shit right there. Because um, that uh, what was it? If in fact in a bookstore you wouldn't even notice it because it's an illustrated story written on thirty pages that together would fit on the width of a human hair. Wow. So tiny <laughs> very tiny i wonder how they do it uh number 19 noah webster spent 25 years writing his first dictionary that does not really surprise me so much considering how language grows and evolves even over you know a year yeah. so that that's that's understandable number 20 catch 22 which was originally titled catch 18 i don't know what the difference would be but hey <laughs> <laughs> number 21 the great gatsby was almost titled gold-headed gatsby and under the red white and blue hmm. would it would the word would they still have worked who knows I don't know. number 22 around the world in 80 days was likely inspired by the life of george francis train but he remains uncredited so yeah i'm just going to base it around this guy uh we're not going to give him any any kind of credit uh, number 23 sherlock holmes has been portrayed in film and television more than any human character in literature keep in mind the key term human yes also yeah. remember still not as popular <laughs> yeah as 50 shades of gray that's that is still mind-boggling how the hell yeah, i oh, don't know oh my god I can I can see some fanfic writer out there trying to cross combine Sherlock Holmes and Fifty Shades of Grey. Well, I'm sure it's been done already. That's uh, probably number twenty four. The Adventures of Tom Sawyer is the first book written with a typewriter. Neat. 
Um, number 25, this side of paradise includes the earliest recorded use of these words, wicked, cool, daiquiri, and t-shirt. When was this written? Let's see. Um, 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 I don't think it's set. Oh, no, 1920. Huh. There you go. The recorded words. Yeah. Number 26. Gulliver's, tra Gulliver's Travels describe the size and orbit speed of the moon circling Mars 100 years before astronomers. That's cool. That is. That's it's it's one of those things where it's like you you I, I have a feeling the writer is like, OK, uh, orbiting speed, uh, it's this, you know, and then like 100 years later, scientists are like, oh, shit, they're right. <laughs> Uh, I, I would love to have would have loved to have seen the look on people's faces when they're like, "Wait, that, that's that's right? Holy shit!" Uh. Number twenty-seven, J.R.R. Tolkien typed the entire Lord of the Rings trilogy with two fingers. You know, I, I have a, I have trouble because especially since I'm so conditioned to the actual proper typing. Whatever, I would have trouble typing just "hello" and "how are you" with two fingers. Uh, that would that would that would be troublesome to me. And this guy wrote three epic novels. Yeah. Uh, the number twenty-eight. The Harvard University Library has four law books bound in human skin. Ah. Why? More Why? Why? More importantly, how do you keep it from like like rotting and disintegrating? I'm sure the human skin was cured, despite the fact that I don't want to think about that. Ah, uh, yeah. I mean, it's like, just... who was like, please make me into a book after I die? <laughs> well, some some bibliophile, I'm sure. I'm sure, but just like. Yeah. Uh... And, you know, there's somebody listening who'll be like, you know what? That'd be a fun idea. Yeah. Oh, I want to be a book when I die. <laughs> yeah. Good uh, luck finding someone who will do it. Uh-huh. Number 29. Charlotte's Web was originally banned in Kansas. That... Because talking animals? Uh, has just, I don't really know. I don't either. And, and I'm... And, and I, I don't know. And I tried clicking yes. over to look at it, but... But what, Talking it, animals are blasphemous and really? unnatural. Really? Yes. Except, except you and, know, there are talking... Uh, yeah. Yeah. You know what else is talking animals that should have been banned if you're going to go with this rule? The Bible. Showing lower life forms with human abilities is sacrilegious and disrespectful to God. Right. Even though, again, Bible has that kind of stuff in there. Just saying. Uh, and then it says one has to wonder if they've ever seen Bugs Bunny or any Disney film for that matter. <laughs> oh, yeah. Number 30. Winnie the Pooh was also banned in the U.S., Turkey, and the U.K. Uh, again, I'm going to have to go with talking animals. <laughs> I'm not uh, even going to bother to look. I'm just going to assume. Yeah, because talking animals is an affront to God and an affront to nature. Well, it's fiction, dumbass. <laughs> Oh, number 31, the Bay, the Bay Psalm book is the first book written in America, and it's the most expensive book in the world. How expensive is this book? Well, let's let's find out. Um, uh, well, the link I clicked isn't telling me. Um, <laughs> but, but I have a feeling that, that if you can afford this book, you're probably a one percenter. Probably. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. Number 32, Annie Allen is the first book written by an African-American to win a Pulitzer Prize. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I'm curious when this was. Oh. By the way, the, the book was $14 million. Um, dollars. I mean, more than that, like fourteen point five almost. <whistles> but a lot. Fourteen point five. Holy shit. Ah. Okay, so uh, 33, Dorothy Strait was named the youngest author ever when she wrote How the World Began at the Age of Four. Wow, that, that, did, yeah, that didn't create any pressure on the schoolyard. Yeah, look at little Dorothy <laughs> over there. She's already got her own book published. What have you done? 
<laughs> I, I put the I put the peg in the hole. Uh. Charles Dickens wrote a Christmas Carol in six weeks. Yeah. Hey, hey, he, he was a badass. That's all I gotta say. Yep. Uh, number thirty-five. Pride and Prejudice was originally titled First Impressions. Robinson Crusoe is considered the first English novel. Gonna have to speed it up a bit because we're running low on time. <laughs> this is the Prophet Muhammad is the world's largest book. And these next four, uh, at least one of them is going to make somebody weep. <laughs> uh, Snooky is a New York Times bestselling author. I didn't even realize she was an author. Jessica Alba is also on the list, as is the rapper Common. I've never even heard of that guy. And Justin Bieber is also on the bestsellers list. Why? Uh, number 42, Nathaniel West 1939 novel Day of the Locust features a character named Homer Simpson. I have heard about that before, actually. Yeah. <laughs> That's, eh, name's the same, I suppose. Number 43, Superman was originally a bald megalomaniac. How different that would have been. Yeah, that I didn't know about at all. Yeah. Number 44, William Shakespeare is the first person to record the words amazement, bedroom, advertising, blanket, bump, gloomy, puking, gossip, drug, champion, accused, and addiction. That I, I actually knew. I probably couldn't have named those words or a bunch of other words that he was the first one to ever use. But pretty much if you are into theater, then you know that Shakespeare came up with a lot of words that are pretty common today. Yeah. And, and now keep in mind, it said he was the first person to record the words. So some of those words may have been used beforehand, but he was the first person to record them, write them down. Yeah. So, number 45, the Joker was supposed to be killed off in the number one issue of Batman. So, the Joker and the Shredder are kind of similar in that, because I think with the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Shredder was the first villain, and he was killed off pretty handily, only to become their, you know, their, their big, bad, recurring villain. Oh. Number 46, Venom was supposed to be a woman. Why'd they change that? I don't know. Uh, number 47, Barbara Cartland finished a novel every two weeks. What does she do? What does she do? Just I don't have servants? What does she do? Just sit on the toilet and have servants bring her food while she wrote? I mean, that's the only way I could think of doing it. Uh, the Tale of Genji was the first novel ever written, circa 1007. Uh, number 49. Gabriel Garcia Marquez won't allow 100 Years of Solitude to become a film. Uh, hey, more power to you. Number 50, last one. The first handwritten Bible since the invention of the printing press cost $8 million and took 12 years to complete. Well, you when you get through all the genealogy stuff and you have to keep it to the same form because, heaven forbid, a Bible be written like a regular book. I just can't imagine copying the Bible by hand. Just, no, thank you. No, thank you. Wow. <laughs> no. But that is 50 books you will never read the same way again. Although, And the, the title is a little misleading because it doesn't have just books. It also notes four authors or four or five authors. So, yeah. But uh, with that, that is going to be end of, the end of our show this week. Uh, I want to thank you guys for listening. If you want to find Holly Christine over on the social medias, where can we find her? Uh, at... Gooky Gox, G O O K Y G O X, and that's Twitter, Tumblr, all of that good stuff. Um, Facebook, you can find my fan page, Holly Christine Brown. Uh, my Etsy store is Gooky Gox also. Um, and you can also check me out on Nerdvice. Yes. <laughs> and if you want to find me on the social medias, I'm Gomer21XX on the Twitters, on the Tumblrs. I've got stuff on rtgomer.com, nerdvice.com, both of which with their own fan pages. You go check them out, give them a like, say hello to everybody. We, we, I promise we will not bite. And if you like the show and you want to help 
and help us you know improve the show a little bit considering money is not coming in like i would want to i'm still trying to find a day job and having no luck uh, i do have a patreon page set up if you if you want to toss money at us to help increase equip you know increase uh improve equipment site space etc um just minimum five dollars and i'm working on revamping some of the rewards because there are some things i want to do specifically for patrons as a way of saying thank you um but that'll come into play later on once things are more implemented but um you can find all of that over at patreon.com slash gomer 21 x and as a bonus if you want some really good artwork go check out my girlfriend you can get commissions from her through her own patreon patreon.com slash becky hop go go get some of her artwork it's really great and i think she may also be commissioning for short animations too uh, but all those details are on her page Again, thank you guys for listening. We will catch you next time. And until then, this is Gomer the Ranting Thespian with Holly Christine, signing off. Bye. Thespian Talk is an RT Gomer Productions presentation. Check us out at rtgomer.com.